So we are working on graphing rational functions. So in each of the last individual videos, we worked through one example separating out each step. Here, we're going to focus on, again, another example, but we're going to put all the steps together at one time. Um, before we do that, let's go ahead and review the steps of these here. The first four individual steps are key parts to helping us sketch the graph of these rational equations. First, the y-intercept by finding f of 0. Then the x-intercept, technically by setting the whole equation equal to 0, but we know we can simplify it by just setting the numerator equal to 0. Finding the domain, really we're focusing on finding the vertical asymptotes. And we do that by figuring out where our function is not defined. And since it's a rational or a fraction, we do that by setting the denominator equal to 0. And finding the in behavior, meaning the horizontal or oblique asymptotes. And we do this by using the face case, looking at the degrees of the numerator compared to the degrees of the denominator. We put all of that information on a graph. And then hopefully that gives us enough information. If not, we can fill in any missing pieces by plotting extra ordered pairs. And then we can always double check by using our graphing calculator. So let's go ahead and look at our example here. g of x is equal to 2x minus 11 over x squared plus 2x minus 8. I encourage you to pause the video at this time to see if you can come up with each of these four steps on your own and then draw a sketch of the graph on your own. Once you get that done, come back and double check to see how well you've done and if you've got the right graph to end up with. So the first step is to find the y-intercept, and we do that by plugging 0 into the equation, meaning I need to come up with g of 0. Remember, the trick to this is all of my variables are going to cancel out, leaving me with the constant terms. So in the numerator, my constant term is negative 11. In the denominator, my constant term is negative 8. So my y-intercept in the correct ordered pair format is 0 and 11 eighths. And if you want to come up with the decimal approximation with that or change it to a mixed fraction to figure out where to graph it, that is perfectly understandable. To find the x-intercept, the official way to do it is to set the whole equation equal to 0. But we know that we can cancel the denominator out. So the shorter way to do it is to set the numerator equal to 0. So that is 2x minus 11 equals 0. It's a linear equation. So I do it by isolating my x variable by moving my 11 over to the other side. And then dividing by 2. So that gives me that x is equal to 11 halves, but remember this is an intercept, so I need to put it in ordered pair format, where it is 11 halves comma 0. Again, if you need to change it to a mixed fraction or a decimal, please do so, so you can graph it in the appropriate place. To find the vertical asymptotes, you do that by setting your denominator equal to 0. The vertical asymptotes come for when your function is not defined, and it's not defined here when we have something divided by 0. That's where it's undefined. So I find my vertical asymptotes by setting my denominator equal to 0. This is a quadratic equation, so I can solve it one of the quadratic ways um, by factoring or quadratic formula or any other method that you may know. I choose to do it by factoring. So I'm going to set up my parentheses since this is a trinomial. Positive 4 and negative 2. These multiply to give me negative 8, but add to give me a positive 2x in the middle. If I set each of these equal to 0 and isolate my variable there, that gives me x equals negative 4 and x equals positive 2. That is in the exact format that we want it to because those are vertical lines, and that is the equation of a vertical line. To find the horizontal or the oblique asymptotes, 
We do that, that is the end behavior of the graph, by looking at our face case. So let's review that. So we determine which case we are in by looking at the degrees of the numerator versus the degrees of the denominator. So let's go back and review. The degree of my numerator is actually a first degree, and the degree of my denominator is actually a second degree. So in this case, the degree of my numerator is less than the degree of our denominator. So that tells us that we are in happy face case, because the degree of our numerator is less than the degree of our denominator. We like the happy face case because we have absolutely no work to do. It's automatically given us our answer, which is y equals zero. That tells us we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. So there is our answer to that. So these four are the most critical parts to determining how to graph a rational function. We need to plot these four things on the graph and then see what we need to come up with past this. So I've outlined all four things that we've come up with over here, and now I need to graph these and, again, see if that's enough to come up with the graph on our own or if we need to come up with any extra details. So my y-intercept is at 11 over 8, and that is approximately 1 and 3 eighths, so I go up a little bit above 1. Okay. My x-intercept is at 11 over 2, so that gives me 5 and a half, so let me count over 5 and a half places, giving me my x-intercept. I have two vertical asymptotes, one at negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. I have a vertical line here. and one at two. So I have a vertical line here. Since I have two vertical asymptotes, remember that gives me one extra part to the graph. So two vertical asymptotes tells me I should have three parts to the graph. If you don't have three parts to the graph, that means you're missing something and you need to go back and double check what's going on. The last is we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. This is exactly on our x-axis, which is kind of hard to draw, so I try and draw it as close to I can, but still visually that I can see it. Notice I have a point on one of my horizontal asymptotes. That is okay. I can cross a horizontal asymptote. But remember, you can never cross a vertical asymptote. If that's happening, that means something is going wrong and you need to go back and fix it. At this point, this may or may not be enough information for you to come up with this graph. If it's not enough information, I encourage you to plot some more points. Or another thing that we could do is move on to step number six, was actually utilize our graphing calculator. So let's go ahead and do that here. So I'm going to plug this equation into my calculator, remembering to insert parentheses around the numerator and the denominator separately, so that way it knows to read the whole numerator divided by my whole denominator. Okay, I have it entered in there. The way to get to the standard window is zoom number six, the standard. And that's going to give me the supposed graph that we should have come up with. Now again, it doesn't graph our vertical or a horizontal asymptotes, but whatever we have here should match whatever we have there. Notice this U in the middle, that's going to be the same as the U that we have here. If we just draw it following our vertical asymptote, on the left and on the right, but hitting our point there. So that's what I have there, me going through my y-intercept, but also following my two vertical asymptotes. On the left, my graph's going to follow my horizontal asymptote over here and my vertical asymptote down there. 
So let me draw that as well. Follows my horizontal asymptote, curves around, and follows my vertical asymptote. Okay, so let's draw the right-hand part of this graph here. So it's going to follow my vertical asymptote there. It's going to come around. It actually has to go through my point there. What's going to happen is it's going to rise a little bit, and then it's going to curve around, and it's going to follow my horizontal asymptote. Now, I've definitely overemphasized this, and when we look at the graph, we definitely don't see that. But we do want to emphasize that it did cross, and it does come back and follow our horizontal asymptote. If you want to see that on the graph, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a box around this here, and I'm going to zoom in on this here so you can see this image there. So let me do that. Let me change my window. I'm going to change my scale to be about um, 5 because that's where my x-intercept is. And I actually have to zoom out quite a bit to see the whole emphasis there. And my y-min, I'm going to make it very small around my x-axis. So when I graph this, I should see the thing that's happening over here on the right. And that's the image that I see there. Okay, so that means this red graph here is the official graph of my g of x there. So we have come up with a sketch of this graph by using all of the individual information that we learned from here.